Hello guys, today we're going to solve another paper by GCSC Computer Science and the paper code is 0472 and the date is May June 2023. Let's begin solving the paper. Question number one, output devices are used to output data from a computer. Circle three devices that are output devices. First one is actuators, this is output device, we can circle this one. Uh, DVD or uh, digital versatile disk, this is not a the output device is storage device keyboard is input device microphone is an input device mouse is an input device printer is output device we can circle this one scanner is an input device sensor is input device sd is a storage device speaker speaker is output device these are three devices that are output devices question number two a binary number can be converted to hexadecimal convert two binary numbers to hexadecimal we need to convert those two binary numbers into hexadecimal how we convert the binary numbers to hexadecimals first we divide them into nibble like one number into four bits four bits let's first solve the question here first question will be here question one we write the bits one two four eight this is the first number let's divide it into two four bits four bits first four bits will be one zero zero one here next four bit will be double zero and double one Let's add them up. 8 plus 1 is 9, and this is 2 plus 1 is 3. The answer will be 9, 3. This is in hex. Let's do the question number 2. We do the same thing. 1, 2, 4, and 8. First four bits are 4, 0. 1, 2, 3, and 4, 0. And next one is double 1, 0, 1. 1, 1, 0, and so 4, 0 is 0, and 8 plus 4 is 12 plus 1, 13. 13 is D in hexadecimal, right? So the answer will be 0 and D. This is the answer. So the part B is a value is stored in a register. This value is stored in a register. A logical right shift of three places is performed on the binary number. Complete the binary register to show its content after the logical right shift. It's a logical right shift, three places. We just delete the right three bits and then we add those bits here. Four, one, one, two, three, four, four, one, and then we have one, zero. We have now three bits. We can just add zero here. Zero, zero, and zero. This is the answer. Part two is state one effect. This logical shift has on the binary number, it is divided by the number is is divided by 8. Divided by 8. Because it is a 3 time and right shift. Right shift means divide. Part C. Give two reasons why programmer may use hexadecimal to represent the binary numbers. There are a few reasons why the programmer use the uh, the hexadecimal to represent the binary number first one is the hex take less space for example one hexadecimal number is equal to four binary numbers instead of writing four binary numbers you can just write one hexadecimal could be the easy easy to write write slash work slash read read hacks okay and number three could be the easy to debug the code easy to debug the code part d the dandy number can also be converted to have the decimal Convert the dandy number to hexadecimal. Now we have a dandy number and we need to convert it to the hexadecimal. If you want to convert the dandy number to hexadecimal, step number one is you just need to convert it to binary first. So let's first convert the 301 to binary. 301, we use the divide method. Divide by 2 is 150. Divide by 2 is 75. Divide by 2 is 37. Divide by 2 is 18. And then we have nine and then we have four two and one if the number is even the reminder is zero if the number is odd reminder is one zero this is odd reminder is one even zero this is one this is one zero and this is one how we write the bits we write from top to bottom okay 
Okay, so now let's write the bits. We start from top to bottom. One, zero, zero, one. Okay. And then we have zero, double, one, and zero, one. Let me confirm. One, double, zero, one. Here, we're done here. So zero, double, one, and zero, one. This is it. This is a binary number. Now what we do, we can, we need to divide the number into four bits, four bits. Okay, let's write the four bits first. So one, zero, one, one. These are the first four bits. So, and then zero, one zero zero this is the next four bits and then we have the last bit is one and we need to we can add the four zeros here okay so now let's let's convert the each number to the binary is eight plus two sorry eight plus four is twelve plus one is thirteen this is thirteen this one is two and this one is one one is one in hexadecimal two is two in hexadecimal and thirteen is d in hexadecimal so the answer will be one two and d one two and d D three zero one is equal to one two D in hexadecimal. Question number three. When keys are pressed on a keyboard, the text is converted to binary to be processed by the computer. Describe how the text is converted to binary to be processed by the computer. Okay. And we know that the computer uses character set. Computer uses character set. to set to convert text to binary and we have two two character set one is called the ASCII and second one is called the Unicode computer uses these two character set to convert the text to binary part b text that is input into computer can be stored in a text file a text file can be compressed using lossless compression state what effect this has on the text file when you compress the text file you reduce its size we can say compression can reduce the file size right compression can reduce file size and save the storage describe how lossless compression compresses the text for the text we usually use the rle or run length encoding in the run length encoding we find all the repeating letters or words and then index them with the number of occurrence with their position we can read about rle in chapter one and write the answer is quite long answer i'm not answering this question here for you question number three give two reasons why th why the text file may have been compressed reason one to save the storage because when the file is compressed it will take less space on the disk second to reduce to reduce the bandwidth needed to transmit that file needed to transmit these are the two reasons we can why we need to compress the files question number four a student uses a mobile phone to take photographs of a school project the student need to transmit the photographs to their computer they could use serial data transmission or the parallel data transmission to transmit the photographs describe how the photograph would be transmitted using the serial data transmission we need to describe how the data transmission happened using a serial in the serial we use one channel or one wire and one bit one bit is transmitted at a time one bit one bit transmitted at a time okay in serial transmission there's one channel and one bit is transmitted at a time 
give two benefits of transmitting the photograph using the serial data transmission two benefits first benefit is the less errors because it's using the one channel and second one will be the high transmission speed So these are the two benefits of transmitting photographs using the serial data transmission. Number three, state one benefit of the student using the parallel data transmission instead of serial data transmission. As we know in the parallel, you know, we are using the multiple channels to transmit the data. Theoretically, we can say the speed will be high. Okay, Transmission speed will be higher. transmission speed uh, part b the photographs are transmitted across the network to cloud storage a device on the network forward that data towards the correct destination state the name of the device that is the router describe what is meant by the cloud storage what is cloud storage a cloud storage means the storing data in a remote location cloud storage storage mean storing data data in a remote remote location okay. next give one disadvantage of storing photographs in the cloud storage instead of storing them locally okay, the first and more, most obvious one is will be the if there is no internet you cannot access the data no internet no access to data second one could be the cost maybe cost is high so these are the two reasons let's move to the next question question number five a programmer writes a computer program using a high level language take one box to show which statement is correct about writing computer program in a high level language so the high level language is a language that is close to the human language for example python is a high level language and the c c sharp java these are all the high level languages the option A is mnemonics are used to create uh, instruction. No, it's not because assembly language, which is a low-level language, uses mnemonics to create instruction. Option A is incorrect. The computer program is harder to debug than a low-language program. This is also incorrect because low-level language programs are much more harder to debug because they are usually used the mnemonics and also in the machine code, they use only binary. Uh, option C. And the, the computer program is a machine independent yes this option is correct for example you can write a program in one machine on one computer and then you can take that program to another computer and it will run this option looks correct let me read the option d the hardware of the computer can be directly manipulated no we cannot manipulate the hardware of the computer using the high level language the correct option is c option b the programmer uses a compiler to translate the computer program Describe how the com compiler translate the computer program. Here we have uh, compiler translate all the high level language code to the low level language code. It translates all the code before it is executed. It creates an executable file of that code after, after uh, it's done with compilation. You can write this answer. Uh, question number two, describe how compiler report the error. Compiler first translate entire block of code and display all the errors in the code translate an entire block of code code and and display display all errors as in the code
the user have to fix the errors before creating the executable file the second option could be user or the programmer have to fix all of the the error before creating the executable file of that code. See, the programmer uses an integrated development environment or IDE uh, to create the computer program. One function of IDE is that it it has a built-in compiler give three other common function of IDEs. This is very easy. First function could be the autocorrect. Then we have the auto completion. Auto completion. And third one could be the pretty prints. print that is the option C let's move to the next one question number six complete the statement about the cookies use the terms from the list some of the term in the list will not be used some term may be used more than once this is information and these are the key terms we have the compression ex executable html https image let's see start from here cookies are small files so cookies are small text file this one we can write the text here cookies are small text file that are sent between and that are sent between a web server and a web browser cookies are stored in the memory which cookies are stored in the memory and not in user secondary storage session cookies session cookies is on here when the web browser is closed cookies is lost a session cookies is lost when the web browser is closed the session cookie will come here also let's see w s i o n cookies is cookie is lost wherever the persistent cookies is not lost persistent because this cookie is stored inside the uh, user's hard disk and session cookies is stored in the memory of in the RAM and so on hard disk give three functions of the cookie what are the three functions of the cookies first function could be uh, store the user's login store login details and hold items hold items in virtual cart when shopping online when shopping online okay. and uh, store the user preferences i can also use to store user preferences for a website these are the features of the cookie let's move to the next question question number seven a distributed denial of service attack or ddos is a cyber security threat draw and annotate the diagram to represent the process of ddos attack we need to draw and annotate the diagram of ddos attack in the ddos attack we have four things right one is the hacker let's say this is the hacker this guy is the hacker is an evil guy this is the hacker then we have the compromised computer we call them what we call them the botnet let's say this is the different botnets here we have different botnets and botnet of nets a uh, botnet is comprised of the zombies right these are the zombies or the ports each this is a big botnet. We have different zombies here. These are the computer. Next, we have a web server. This is a web server. Web server. And then we have a 
legit user that really want to use that website this is a happy guy he's a legit user this is a web server this is the botnet uh, botnet this is the attacker or hacker maybe you can say it and these computer are zombies what happened attacker wants to attack this web server he he sent a signal to the botnet botnet all the botnet they started flooding the request to that this server and this server and this is the real youth that want to access the the website he he won't be able to access the website because these botnets are already sending and overwhelming the web server and over the web server will crash and this user won't be able to access the website this is how it works uh, you can see the diagram we have hacker we have a botnet and botnet is made up of zombies and then we have a web server here uh, where the hacker wants to attack then we have a legit user hacker gave a signal to so the botnet botnet attack to the web server and the legit user this guy happy guy he cannot access the website that's how that denied that server attack work let's move to the next question state two aims of carrying out the deed of the attack first would be the ransom maybe the hacker wants to get the money demand ransom to stop the attack to stop attack second one will be the reputation number two will be damage the damage the company reputation Or third could be the taking the revenge. These could be the three possible reasons or aims of the, the DDoS attack. Next part C is give two security solution that can be used to help prevent DDoS attacks being successful. We have we can use the, the firewall. Firewall. Or we can use the proxy server. These are the two solutions that we can use to prevent the DDoS attack. Question number eight. A computer is connected to a network and assigned an IPv4 address. Pick one box to show which device would assign the IP4 address to the computer. DNS, no DNS is used to resolve the IP address and the domain name things. NIC, NIC is not because NIC uses the MAC address and this is the responsible for connecting over device to the network. Router, uh, yeah, router looks correct. Let's see the last option is D web server. No, web server is not responsible for giving the IP address. The correct option will be the option C, which is a router or router. And describe the characteristic of an IPv4 address. What are the characteristic of IPv4 address? Let's first write the IPv4 address. Let's say this is the IPv4 192.168.1.1. Five, six. Let's say this is the example. Now we can see the characteristic of this one. First of all, first thing is all the numbers, they are the dandy number. It uses dandy numbers. Second, it has four set of numbers one, two, three, and four. It has four set of numbers number three each number is separated by the dot each set of number is separated by by uh, dot uh, this one what else is the 32 bit address we can also say this number four because this, this is a four point question we need to write the four points it's a 32 bit address 
it is 32 bit address let's move to the next question one component of an expert system is the impairs engine identify three other component in an expert system we have the knowledge base We have rule base and we have the interface, user interface or UI. Option B is describe the role of inference engine in the expert system. What is the role uh, of the inference system? It provides the solution to problems. There's two number questions, two more questions. We need to write two points. First point will be it provide solution to problems second will be by applying rules applying rules to knowledge rules to knowledge question number 10 a user has both system software and application software installed on their computer describe the difference between uh, system software and application software give an example of each software we need to give the first give the definition of system software and then we need to give the uh, application software definition then we need to give one example of each software first let's start with the system software system software these type of software provide services to the computer a software System software. A software that provide services to the computer. Services to the computer. Example could be the antivirus. Or maybe operating system. Uh, what else we can have? We have the compression software. Etc. Next one is the application software. A software that provide services to to the user. Example could be the Photoshop. or we can say the PowerPoint or WPS etc that's it a part B state which component in the computer would store both type of software when the power is turned off the answer is pretty easy it's a HDD or SD that's it I think we're done yes we're done with the paper see you in the next class bye